today we're going to talk about how to resolve hearing loss with nutrients. And of course, when you do research on this topic, you're going to find this word that keeps popping up over and over and over as the cause of hearing loss. And that is, it's idiopathic. What does that mean? It means we don't know. There's two types of general hearing loss. You have the congenital, which doesn't necessarily mean it's genetic. It could just mean that your mother had an infection when she was carrying you and that created hearing loss, or it could have been an iodine deficiency that she had, or alcohol. Alcohol can severely affect the hearing and many other things involved with the nerves, but also viruses can do it as well. Cytomegaloviruses, herpes viruses. So that is congenital, okay. Then you have acquired hearing loss. You might see this term age-related hearing loss, but there's not a lot of solutions other than hearing aids. So the two main things that I see that are affecting hearing are a group of viruses and also nutritional deficiencies. So when you go through an acute infection, there's an initial dramatic decrease in zinc and iron. Both of these are related to a loss of hearing. And this is why after a chronic infection, people start developing like ulcers inside the mouth. That is a zinc deficiency. A loss of taste or smell, that's also a zinc deficiency. Or they start craving things weird like dirt, ice, charcoal. All of those could be an iron deficiency. Now, viruses can also create other deficiencies too, like a selenium deficiency. But selenium is fascinating because it's uh, involved in the thyroid, helping convert from T4 to T3, the active form of the thyroid hormone. It's also key in helping the T helper cell work. And that is the cell that helps coordinate the entire immune system. So selenium is important in inflammatory conditions, as well as autoimmune conditions, especially if it's related to the thyroid, as in Hashimoto's. There are a lot of viruses involved in hearing loss. You have measles, which by the way, can deplete you of vitamin A. You have shingles, it was the chicken pox when you were a kid. So it is important to kind of look in your past to see when your hearing loss started and what happened right before that. Did you get some reoccurrence of a virus that was in remission? Then we have the sensory nerves that are involved in the ear that can become damaged having diabetes. That's called diabetic autonomic neuropathy. This involves a severe B1 deficiency B1 is like the key nutrient to help your autonomic nervous system. And if you're diabetic, you're automatically going to be deficient in vitamin B1. So if you have all the sugar going through your bloodstream, it's going to take a lot of B1 to metabolize that, and it could affect the inner ear. So B1 is another really key nutrient to help hearing. But if you're going to take B1, especially if it's related to diabetes, I would recommend taking something called benfotamine that can actually penetrate into the myelin sheath, into the nerve. So then we get into vitamin D. First of all, you have all of the autoimmune diseases that relate to hearing loss. You have autoimmune inner ear disease. You have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. But the antidote to all of those is vitamin D in higher doses. There's also a big connection between low vitamin D and vertigo, which is also related to the ear. And on top of that, viruses can really lower your ability to absorb vitamin D at the receptor level. So even though you're taking the regular amounts, you might not be getting it in the receptor because that virus is downgrading the receptor. And I'm not telling you to start taking all these vitamins. I'm just giving you clues to look at your life to see if you could potentially connect the dots between some deficiency that you might have and your hearing loss. And did you know that you have three little tiny fragile bones in the inner ear? And if they're not formed properly or they're not working correctly, you can start experiencing hearing loss. And so selenium protects you against loud sounds because it's all about countering oxidative stress. And the same thing with iron and zinc. One little point about uh, selenium, this is a very powerful molecule to protect you against oxidative damage and hydrogen peroxide buildup. Now, hydrogen peroxide uh, can even trigger an autoimmune disease. And so this is why people with vitiligo 
and inflammatory conditions should be taking selenium. But here's the thing. In order to hear, you need to have high amounts of potassium. And if you don't have enough potassium, you won't be able to hear. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is aldosterone. It's a hormone that's made from your adrenal glands that helps you regulate potassium. And it relates to blood pressure control as well. Now, why would aldosterone help someone? Because as we age, aldosterone goes down, but also potassium goes down too. Now, just to learn more about potassium, if you have not seen my video on potassium, you should probably check it out. I'll put it up right here.